lady, where usually I show you how to make fast, simple meals that you can make in advance, put in your freezer and use whenever you want. But today, I'm not in my kitchen. I'm in Harriet's kitchen and we are doing the ultimate batching of batching jam. Why wouldn't you want to batch jam? It's amazing. Um, Harriet Busby, you are the owner of Border Berries in the Borders, where you pick your own fruit, which is amazing. Do come along and check it out, just off the A68 from St Boswell's. And um, today we are going to show you raspberry jam. No, we're not. We're not going to show you raspberry jam. We just made raspberry jam. We're going to show you strawberry jam. jam. Okay, so Harriet, strawberry jam. I have heard it is a bit trickier than raspberry jam. So chat me through the process. Strawberries have a lot more water content. They're much fleshier and juicier than a raspberry. So um, the jam making process gets rid of the excess, uh, evaporates the water. So as you can imagine, it's a little bit harder to find the setting point and maybe takes a wee bit longer to cook. So you need to start with top quality berries again because they've got a higher pectin content, which is what makes your jam set, which helps preserve it. So a good quality berry. Okay, you might chuck in some older berries, but I would advise always starting with a good, fresh, good quality berry. Perfect. Yeah. So you, yeah. So not waiting until it's like, oh, those strawberries are slightly gone to pop. We'll just make them into a jam. And I should add that actually using uh, frozen berries is totally fine. If they were frozen when they were um, at, at their peak, that's also a um, completely fine way of making strawberry jam. So if anybody's following the recipe, which will be linked down below, it's also on the Border Berry website and on my Batch Lady website, which will pop up on the screen just now, then um, you know that you can take the same quantity, basically, and it's either frozen or fresh. It doesn't that's really right. matter. Excellent. Let's talk about sugar. So we are using granulated sugar, which works best and you can get jam sugar. You can use jam sugar, and this is um, a ready mixed sugar of granulated sugar, along with pectin and citric acid. So it can be hard to come by. You might find that it's sold out in your supermarket. If you want to make your own, then it's perfectly possible to buy powdered pectin and citric acid online. Uh, you can also buy bottles of Cherto liquid pectin and follow the instructions there instead. So we've got our sugar, we've got our lovely border berry, strawberries, and we're using lemon, is that right? We're adding lemon to this recipe because it gives it a little bit of an extra zing. Strawberries are a very sweet and soft flavor, so that the tang of lemon really lifts this recipe. Um, you can also add um, gently cooked red currants or gooseberries, uh, just their sort of um, pulp to the, to the recipe. It adds um, an extra lift and they have a naturally higher pectin content, so that can really boost it. The red currants especially add a fantastic kind of red, bright flavour to the jam and uh, I really love it. Yeah, oh, I, I quite often hear, very rarely do I see strawberry jam on its own actually, it's usually always mixed with something else. So if we want to say use gooseberries and strawberries, um, just go and check out the website, Harriet's Border Berries website will give you the exact quantities of what you need to use. Um, so because you're changing the ratio slightly, so making jam is a ratio between sugar and fruit, basically. Um, now, we've already got lots of strawberries in our pan ready to go. This is just a little bowl to let you see. We're going to add the rest of the strawberries in. Can I just ask you about this pan? So this is a good sort of jam making pan, but it is really just it's just a big pot, isn't it? It is, and um, it's, got a, it's got a thick base on it, and that's really important in jam making because thick bases help conduct the heat and prevent the jam from burning because you're obviously putting a lot of sugar in there, and you need to make sure as you're cooking away that your jam isn't sticking to the base of it. So thin pans are really tricky uh, to stop from burning, and they're a nightmare to wash up. Yeah. And we're also going to mention we're size of strawberries. Size of strawberries. Um, now, uh, if you've got a massive strawberry like this... Do you know what we call this in our house? Because we're Scottish. A schuster. A schuster. A schuster. A schuster. A huge one. It's a muckle one. <laughs> um, so slice them up. Uh, and then some people prefer making strawberry jam only with small berries, and then they keep their size... Uh, and you get a whole berry out of your pot at the end. So it's entirely up to you, but do slice the large ones. Excellent, so in our pot, we've already got the strawberries. We're just adding this remainder. 
Then we're going to add the sugar. Okay, so once you've got everything in your pot and it is good to go, you're just going to stir it around and um, just give it a quick mix. Then what you're going to see from now on is we made raspberry jam and it makes it in exactly the same way now as we did strawberry, so we're not going to go and make both of them. You're then going to see us making a raspberry jam and following the process along, which is exactly the same from now on in if you did strawberries or raspberries. Okay, so here goes. We're just putting it on quite a light heat, is that right, just it, to dissolve it's it It's on down. a low heat because the, the vital thing is to make sure the sugar has fully dissolved before you start boiling the jam. So the, the sugar needs to be fully dissolved. If you don't fully dissolve it, you will end up with a, a gritty granulated kind of jam. It's like the principle of dissolving sugar in many other recipes. Got you. And um, you told me earlier on today, so that granulated sugar is better than caster sugar. And I never realized this. Granulated sugar dissolves quicker than caster sugar. And I wouldn't have realized that before. So good to know that tip as well. It makes a clearer and brighter jam as well. So um, it doesn't matter. You can use caster sugar, it'll turn out totally fine. But uh, it's quite, it's quite good to use granulated. Use granulated, brilliant. So we're just going to um, let this dissolve down. I'll let you see what it looks like and we'll come back and see it once it's dissolved. Fine, so the sugar's um, nearly dissolved now. I'm stirring constantly. It's really important to keep stirring it constantly because um, it's, it's vital to stop the jam sticking to the bottom of the pan. We talk about the importance of having a thick-based pan and the, it's vital to keep the stirring going. It's not, it, it, it's not a job that you can go away and leave. You have to be totally dedicated to your jam making and also be prepared to, for it to take longer than you anticipate. So it might say 15 minutes of boiling time, but make sure you've got plenty of time set aside for jam making. Well, we're sitting here. Can I ask you about the jars in the bottom of the agate as well? Yes. So what we do um, before you start cooking your jam, before anything else happens, get your jars ready. So we've already put glass jars into the oven. You've also put in, as we can see on the shot, you've put in the tops of the, so you've washed the jars, you've dried them, and then you've put them in the oven with the jam lids. The lids yes. also um, are part of the whole sterile environment you're creating with your jam. So you need them to be hot too. And when you come to potting up your jam, those hot jars and hot lids um, need to be used as quick as possible and you screw them on. You don't need to use wax. You don't need any cellophane. You're creating a sterile environment if you make sure that your jars are hot and that your jam is 70 degrees plus when you jar it. So we are not taking these jars out until this jam is finished? Until the is very last right? minute. And modern jam jars, um, the ones you buy in supermarkets, they all have a plastic film on the inside of the lid. It's not just a metal lid. And that film it creates a sterile seal as well. So that's why modern jam jars don't require any of your cellophane and wax discs. Ah. Once this jam gets up to boiling temperature, it should really find a setting point by 15 to 20 minutes. So we're just beginning to get it bubbling here. So I'm vigorously stirring it so that it doesn't start splotting. Okay, so our jam is done. We've been sitting here stirring away and um, how do we know our jam's done? So the jam settles down into what we call a rolling boil. So there's a big bubble um, of, of jam in the middle. It's also a lot thicker and splottier. Um, so we can tell it's got quite gloopy. We've evaporated off all the excess water, which is what preserving in this case is all about. We've continued to stir it throughout. And also, uh, particularly if you're making strawberry jam, you might find that you have a light coloured, what we call scum, um, on the surface of your jam when it's ready to pot up. And if you want to disperse those, that, those bubbles, you can pour a little bit of flavourless oil on, just a little bit, about a tablespoon would be enough, and give it a gentle stir, and that should disperse the bubbles. Alternatively, you can just scoop it off and pop it in a little uh, dish, and 
eat it for your tea. So you just don't want that going into your... It doesn't look nice. Tea, but it doesn't look nice, that's all. Yeah, perfect. And so this temperature of a rolling boil, because there's two different ways that we can know that our sugar, that our jam is done, is that we can use a jam thermometer. You can use a jam thermometer, and for this slightly lower sugar jam, I'd say around about 103 degrees C or slightly lower is about right. Um, it's definitely best to go with your eye and make sure that it's looking nice and gloopy and not the runny jam you had at the start, but you can, you can use your um, jam thermometer if you have one um, or a temperature probe of any sort, but don't worry if you don't. You can really do it all by eye. And, and, uh, and if you don't have a thermometer, do not panic. You can get a plate, put it in your fridge. So do this at the beginning before you start making your jam. Get to your, fridge, uh, your plates in the fridge. We've just taken ours out. Now what do we do, Harriet? We're just going to put a small amount of jam, a really small amount. Just It needs to be a plate with a little bit of a lip there. And I should have said that actually it's really important to take your jam off the heat before you do this because you'll end up um, overcooking the jam whilst you're busy waiting for this. So I've just got a tiny teaspoon's worth there and we're going to pop that in the fridge for five minutes and do the jam gel test. Okay, we waited five minutes. How's it looking? Well, we're gonna do a, uh, a gel set test now. So if you watch what I do here, this jam has spent five minutes in the fridge and I'm gonna run my finger through it like that can you see it's actually turned into an entire blob of jelly that's a really ready to pot up jam if it's not ready you would literally be able to turn your plate and the jam might run away from its little little puddle there and okay guys what we should say here is if your jam is running around the plate then Harriet am I right in saying we're going to put this back on the heat we're going to get it going for another 10 minutes this is if your jam is not set you're going to get back in the heat, get stirring, another 10 minutes and get this plate back in the fridge ready to retest, okay? And you're going to do that until you make sure that you get it like this. Now we're ready to go, we are going to move everything over, get our jars out and get potting up. Is it potting up? Is that yes, what I think so. Potting up, let's go. So we've just taken our jars out of the oven and it's really important to work swiftly now while they're still really hot. We've got our very hot lids that are sterile as well. We've got a totally clean sterile J cloth for wiping any drips off the edge of the jars. And we have a heat resistant jug here, a small jug with a good pouring lip ready to scoop up some jam and pour it straight into our jar. You can see it's a wee bit messy, but we're not worrying about that because we're going to wipe the, the rim clean. The fuller you fill it, the less air there is and the more sterile the environment. So just make sure you get rid of any drips on the outside of the jar and get the, that lid on really quickly. And there we go. That is a jar of jam ready for the cupboard. Ta-da! We have made jam. I just, I, I've just absolutely loved that. You have been brilliant at showing us the process from start to finish. Guys, these have cooled down. They are ready to go in a cold, dark sort of place for storage. They're going to last a year, okay, in a store cupboard. Um, use small jars, don't be putting it all in one big jar because once you open it, you then have to use it. Because we have used less sugar in, these, in this recipe, once you open the jar, you need to put it in the fridge, okay? Not in your pantry, back in the fridge. That is how you make raspberry jam with amazing berries from Borders Berries. Thank you so much, Harriet. I'm, I'm, I'm uber You're welcome, excited Suzanne. to Suzanne. The kitchen it. smells great, doesn't it? It's amazing. Go and try making some jam. Hoof over to your local um, place to buy your berries and uh, get, get jam making. Ooh.